Hello, I put that tiny CC3D Revo Mini flight controller running Arduplane 3.9 into my bonsai today and I flew it around for a bit and it flies pretty well uh, about half the time <laughs> but we'll get to the details of that a little bit later. Uh, I thought I might just show you first off the telemetry module that I'm using with this because um, this just arrived the day before. It was quite good timing. I was planning to fly it without this but since it's here I'll, I thought I'd put it in um, and oh, I forgot to line up my screenshot from Banggood but this was about $19 on Banggood um, so I thought I'd try this one instead of the 30 something dollar one from Hobby King. Uh, I was a little bit worried about it because it doesn't have any uh, metal can around this stuff here but so far it seems to be working all right so that's the top and that's the bottom and I was quite pleased to see these pins here because it means it should be quite easy to solder on just a bare wire instead of having to organize one of these plugs and get everything in the right place on on the ordering of the pins there. However, when I tried to power it through this VCC and ground, um, it didn't work for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but I ended up having to power it through this. So I'm using the plug anyway. Um, all right, that's that. Uh, weighs about four grams, and it came with two antennas. So the ground, it's calling this one the air module, and there's another one with a large USB connection soldered onto the end uh, that they're calling the ground module. Uh, this one is a little bit lighter and I'm just going to use one of these antennas, sort of a minimal antenna to keep things nice and light. That's about nine grams altogether. Uh, this is the ground one and it's almost exactly the same as the air one except that it has this connector for USB and it has a uh, CP2102 USB to serial translator thing there. But the, the the rest of it here is all pretty much identical as far as I can tell. And especially if you look on the other side, even the screen print, <laughs> they've used the same screen print here, even though there's no pads to be labeled here. So pretty sure that these two modules are basically the same thing. Uh, and it's that long and that wide. So when I powered these two modules up, uh, it was rather uneventful. They just worked straight away. Um, I found that they also worked with the Hobby King ones too, provided that you have the same setup. Um, so this is what it showed up as on Windows. It just looks like that Silicon Labs uh, CP2102 chip there. Um, and these are the settings that you'll find out of the box in uh, Mission Planner. So this is the ground one and the air module as they call it. And I think this is uh, pretty much the defaults that my Hobby King one came with but I had changed my Hobby King one, but I, when I changed it back to what this one has, the Hobby King one worked with the air module, so I'm still using the Hobby King one on my ground station at the moment. Now for those of you who are curious about the performance of these telemetry modules, uh, I don't have a whole lot of data yet, and I haven't flown it out too far because the plane is just so hard to see as it gets far away. Um, but I can show you this, and we can see um, as far as I can tell, the difference between these RSI lines and the noise lines signifies the quality of the connection. So when the signal is well above the noise, you have a good signal. And when they come down close to each other like that, you're almost losing the connection. I think if the RSSI goes below the noise, then you, you've lost your connection. And we can see it has gone down to about 50-ish at a few points there. So these points here are when the plane was furthest away, just there and there. And they're also when the plane was turning so that the null point of the antenna was pointing towards the ground station. Just, just briefly. So it's probably about the worst orientation. Um, so you may be thinking, well, that, that's not too bad. And if we compare it to this one here, this is a the same kind of log that I took on my big FX79 Buffalo at Flying Wing. And this is using the Hobby King modules. Um, and they're using better antennas too, so it's not a direct comparison of the modules. We're also looking at antenna differences. And we can see that at this point, those two modules uh, were also going down to about 50 in the RSSI. But the important thing is what we see here. This is at three kilometers distance that we're getting down to about 50. Um, and what I'm not telling you about these newer modules that I've got is how far, how far away I was at this point. And that's how far away I was. Only 250 meters. And already the signal has dropped to about the point where the Hobby King modules were at three kilometers. Um, so like I say, it remains to be seen. I should have, or I should do a test in the future with using the same antenna so we'll get a proper apples to apples comparison. But what I'm guessing at the moment is that the Hobby King 
modules are a fair bit better than these newer modules that I'm trying. And so altogether, uh, this is actually a little bit more wiring than I needed, but if you wanted to spread things out on a larger plane, you're probably going to want this much wiring, but it still comes in at under 30 grams. And I think this here is, yeah, when I finally cut down the wires to just what I was going to need, uh, it's just a bit over 21 grams. So this is flight controller, GPS, telemetry, you know, magnetometer, barrow, everything pretty much. Um, and on my bond side, this is what I was replacing. This is uh, one of those cheap AFD, uh, what is it? It's the one of those receivers for, from Flysky that don't have any telemetry or fancy stuff on it. But even then, this receiver is actually larger than the CC3D uh, Revo Mini. So it was pretty easy to just put it in there. Um, we seem to have another photo of this again. What is that for? I don't know why I took another photo of that. Hey, it's gone up to 25 grams. Oh, that's weird. Oh, because I have the receiver on here now, maybe? I don't know. Um, so this photo I took just as a reference for future Chris to uh, get right if he ever has to come back and do this again. These are the connections for the receiver. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. While I was editing this video, I remembered something very important that I forgot to include in the original recording, and that is the fact that I'm not using the same firmware that I showed you in my previous video. Um, I got some assistance on how to use the official ArduPilot release and the uh, flashing for the DFU and everything to get this to work. So that's what I'm using now. Uh, so what I wanted to do originally, actually, I like to try the vanilla version of things before I try the other flavors. Um, but I might come back to the Night Ghost build later on because, as far as I can tell, the official ArduPilot build does not support SD card uh, logging at the moment for the Revo Mini uh, and the Night Ghost. Night Ghost has a version of it, his that does that. Anyway. Um, so just to quickly show you what I did to install the um, official build, um, you basically I was just installing the wrong bin file before. So if you look in the ArduPilot Tools Bootloaders folder, uh, you can get this directly from GitHub. Um, you want to get this Revo 405 bootloader bin file, and using the DFU util tool that we saw in my last video, you can flash that and the process is all described on this page. So the command line that I ended up using was exactly this, so I didn't have to change anything. Well, not exactly this, because the last part you have to change to Revo 405 or whatever that file was that we just saw. And that should get the bootloader loaded up to the point where when you plug it in, as it says here, your USB should detect that as a device called that. Uh, and then it says you now you can use the normal firmware loading tools from ArduPilot to load a flight firmware. So what that means is that you're supposed to be able to come to this screen and there is, where is it, down here there's a link that says load custom firmware and you're supposed to be able to click on there and it will detect your device but that actually did not work for me on Windows and it, my computer just could not detect the board as a valid target for installation so I ended up doing this on Ubuntu again and um, not really sure how you would do this on Windows, but on Ubuntu it's as easy as falling off a log basically. So you get the, uh, you use git to clone the ArduPilot repository to your local computer and then you would run that uh, and then run that and then you should be able to build with the WAIF uh, as described on this page and all the usage is described there. It's just a few commands and you can also use this WAIF tool to um, upload it like that so the exact sequence of commands that I typed was this so this is WAIF configure board revo mini WAIF plane and then WAIF plane upload I'm not sure you might be able to do these both in one line but in any case they do work um, exactly as I did them there and fortunately when I tried this the my flight controller was detected as a target for firmware uploading so uh, it worked out on Ubuntu. Now where was I? So this is SBUS on the yellow wire of the RC input that's the third one along or oh, well if you don't count ground and VCC it's one two three it's yellow there and over on this side we have uh, GPS going into flexi port and then uh, the telemetry on to main port and that's how the wires will be 
Oh, just going back to this photo for a moment. Uh, the servos and the motor or ESC will be connected onto this PWM out. So again, we have ground and VCC, and this is where I'm powering the board from. So this is going to be coming from the back on the ESC. And then white channel 1 is left servo, blue channel 2 is right servo, and then 3 yellow is the ESC. All right, I have everything packed into the plane now and it's all working and I'm just about to put some tape over these areas here to flatten them all down. They're all smooth and streamlined, nothing's sticking up into the airflow apart from the battery of course. I uh, just realized that I forgot to make a little voltage divider to see what the battery voltage is uh, and see it on the uh, ground station. So I'm not going to bother with that I think for the first few flights. I'll just use the normal standard battery alarm on the balance plug. Um, I've kind of had enough <laughs> of trying to poke things in here now, it took quite a while. Um, fortunately everything went together fairly well. The only <laughs> the only bout of swearing and cursing that I went through was discovering that the ESC did not accept uh, a minimum throttle pulse of 1100 microseconds. It wanted to be 1000 microseconds and it took me about an hour to figure out what the hell was going on but when I realized it was just a matter of setting servo 3 min to be 1000 instead of 1100. Um, so let me just show you a little bit closer if we can focus please. There we go. Um, yeah so the flight controller and the ESC are squashed in together and the magnetometer is right here at the tip of that uh, direction arrow printing bit there so it's not really in such a good place next to the high current of this wire here but it is a plane so the magnetometer is uh, not really as necessary as it is on a multi-rotor so I think I'll just give it a try like that and see how it goes. Receiver is over there, just going to use one of these. Uh, it has S bus output which is quite convenient antenna for that is just stuck into the foam. This foam is actually quite nice for mounting things on um, thin things like this where you can just cut a groove and shove it in. This plane has seen better days obviously but I think it'll fly just fine. Um, so I've made a sort of a positive and negative rail for 5 volts here just with some of those uh, servo connectors and uh, pretty much just soldered everything else together instead of plugging just to keep it nice and compact. GPS is over there. It's underneath the servo um, push rod, which is a bit of a bummer, but I think it'll be fine. And then over here we have the telemetry and antenna for that goes down again like that, nice and easily mounted. So this sort of roughly balances things out left to right weight-wise and it keeps the noisy transmission antenna, which is going to be this one, because um, this this one actually does not have telemetry, this FSA8S, at least I don't think it does. Pretty sure it doesn't. So this one is not going to be doing any, any transmitting, it's only listening. So it shouldn't be too, uh, too much of a problem being close to the GPS. Alright, so you're probably wondering how much this weighs. Why is this not going to zero? Come on. I seem to be having a slight problem with my scale, it's not really... Hmm, anyway. Alright, so let's put this on here, and it's 180, it's just the tip of the wing is leaning on the microphone just above the camera, so it's holding it nice and perfectly vertical here, and we're clocking in at 180 grams, say, so there we go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 